Hey fish guys, I still haven't figured out what I want to call you guys yet. My name's Thomas, I'm Fish Guru Aquatics, and I have a strange question for you. Can any of you guess why I am hoarding little green baskets? Well, here's the thing. I'm keeping my breeding stock in a bare bottom aquarium. And well, a bare bottom aquarium is great for certain things like maintenance, cleanliness, all these kind of things that are important to keeping fish healthy and alive long enough to breed them. Um, once the fry actually, ha once you actually get fry, there's really nowhere for them to go. So the adults sometimes will pour date on them, they'll sometimes pick off the eggs. Um, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can A, uh, have a breeder mop in there for egg layers and just pull the eggs out and move them, which is fine. You're exposing the eggs to stress and moving them in and out. Um, but with live bre breeding fish and certain types of cichlids that like parentally brood their fish, um, you really need to keep the adults in there as much as possible. So that's where these little green baskets come in. These are tomato baskets. Uh, I got them from work. I work at, I'm a chef, so we got a lot of produce. These are my little secret weapon. Um, I just simply set them in the bottom of the tank, maybe stack three high, four high, and as you see here, there is a small set of holes there. The fry can get in there and hide, we stay away from the adults. The adults can't fit into these, um, we use mollies for example, that's why I did this last time. Um, the molly, adult mollies can't fit through the holes to get to the babies. So there's at least a small section of the tank where the babies are away from the adults. As the fry get bigger, a little more bolder, you can actually encourage them by removing a couple layers. They can still get in and out very simply. As they get even bigger, you just move another layer. At this point, they're pretty much adults. Um, and you can just, uh, you can just have a single basket in the bottom of the tank. Um, you can also stack them up in different patterns, like alternating, like a giant tall structure. Um, they're plastic, they're non-porous, they do float, which is a bad thing, so you need to anchor them down with something. Um, and that actually helps your survival rate of your fry. I found it cuts down on predation from the parents. Um, and here's the thing, you have to use the green ones. They also come in red and clear, neither one of which work. The clear ones, they can't see them, and the red ones, they also, I guess, can't see them. Red doesn't really transfer very well through uh, water, so a lot of fish can't really see that color. Uh, that's why things like Serpe Tetras are so well camouflaged. They're bright red. Um, but yeah, that's why I've been hoarding these little things at work. Um, I don't really have a whole lot to show you about a big filter. Um, I'm working on getting a breeder tub, which... Um, should be interesting uh, and I'm still saving up for the discus um, I've also put an order for the trios of the three of the two epistogrammas I actually have now um, epistogramma master eye and epistogramma and I'm going to butcher this name by Nalati no, there's no A L in it um, by Nalati by Nalati um, the two banded cichlid. Uh, if you know how to pronounce it, please share with me. <laughs> but, um, my Latin sucks. Um, everything's just sitting in storage right now. Uh, I'm looking to build some shelves to house everything on because I want to store the 20 longs long ways on the shelf. That way I can have maximum amount of space because that way they're only 18 inches wide. Only eight inches wide, and you can just stack a bunch of them up. And uh, yeah, that's been the plan so far. Um, my two pistogrammas are doing really well. My uh, little one actually went into breeding dress, so I was able to identify her uh, really easily. The master I hasn't been aggressive or breeding ever since, um, and my Texas cichlids are still getting huge. So. 
I actually need to move a couple of the, uh, the, the sub submissive adults out of the tank because they're going to get picked on and not eating properly and getting staying small. So that's not a good thing for fish you're trying to sell. Um, they're actually probably going to help cycle the aquarium. I'm going to be moving media and stuff into that aquarium, moving rocks out. Uh, it's been set up kind of prettily over there just because I want um, them to take care of it. <laughs> um, I have to have people fish that for me. The koi are still growing, they're getting huge. I actually am probably going to start selling those off in the month of October. Probably middle of September, while well, it's still warm. Uh, I don't want to be moving fish when it's cold. And I'll be moving the plants indoors relatively quickly as well. Because um, I don't want them to get a cold snap and die. But it's like August 20th. I, it's, tomorrow's the eclipse. Actually, is it midnight yet? Uh, no, tomorrow is the eclipse. Um, should be rather interesting. I think I want to go to the zoo and just watch all the animals freak out for a little bit. Just because I think that'll be the most entertaining way to spend that day. You know. Uh, yeah, so good luck if you guys have any plans. Uh, yeah, so that's my video. Um, why I poured little green baskets. <laughs> Uh, hopefully that was a helpful little tutorial, and I wish you guys the best in your fish breeding adventure. I will hopefully have some better videos up soon, and I will be getting a new, I will be breaking up my real camera. These are all shot on my phone, so. Yeah. I'm trying to think of something cool to say at the end of these videos. Well, like, like, share, subscribe. Um. I don't think you're going to watch these yet, so, anyway. Alright. Thank you very much. Bye.